I'm joined now by Robert Moran, a partner at the Brunswick Group here in Washington. He's a former project director at Public Opinion Strategies, a leading research firm specializing in political, public affairs, and public policy. Um, Donald Trump, he just keeps uh, jumping and grabbing headlines right and left. This latest announcement. Uh, it's interesting. I don't think I've seen a race, and, and I'd like to get your thoughts on this, well, at least in the primary stage, where the world is really interested in the candidates because of all the salvos he keeps throwing. Give me your sense of, of how he's viewed, especially like in Mexico, would you say? Uh, well, very negatively. Even in the United States, uh, his numbers among Latinos are incredibly negative. Uh, but, I mean, generally speaking, his numbers are negative. 62% of Americans have a negative opinion of Donald Trump. But throwing out this, uh, what are your thoughts on it? Well, it's hard to comment on fantasy, uh, but what he's doing is he's attempting to capitalize on base Republican concerns around the immigration issue. Wisconsin is a bit of an outlier because the exits show, the exit polling shows that Wisconsin voters are less conservative generally on the immigration issue and less likely to support uh, deportation and things like this. So it doesn't play to his strength as much in Wisconsin as it might play in other states. There's this, a, a, a sea change, though, going on in, in politics in the United States. You and I were just chatting about this. Uh, even from the standpoint of trade, how the parties seem to be shifting, right? Right. That's actually one of my biggest um, uh, concerns is historically, ever since World War II, the Republican Party has been the pro-free trade party, uh, pushing forward on trade agreements. Um, but then you had some skepticism about NAFTA, uh, and then you move into the Trump era here, um, and now what, is, what does Pew Research find? Pew Research conducted a survey five days ago. What did it find? It found that Democrats, a majority of Democrats, were pro-free trade agreements. A majority of Republicans were against free trade agreements. Trump voters were the most anti-free trade agreement, concern about jobs. Now, in reality, it's not trade that's going to kill jobs. It's robots and algorithms. But that's not what the average American is thinking about. And in a way, Trump is unwittingly, I think, reorienting the Republican Party away from a free trade agenda, which I think is incredibly destabilizing. Let me ask you, the, uh, we just did this piece on Hillary Clinton, and one, one of the complaints uh, you heard the, uh, the Duke professor say is, is familiarity, that she's been around for forever. People are kind of tired of her. And, and we saw Jeb Bush, the same sort of thing, F very familiar, the family very familiar. Talk to me about this familiarity issue uh, on the political stage, because we see it with Bernie Sanders and yeah. Donald Trump. So I've said this before um, in speeches and other venues. Hillary Clinton's primary campaign reminds me quite a bit of the Bob Dole 96 primary campaign. In 1996, Bob Dole had the machinery and the establishment wrapped up, just like Hillary Clinton does today. Uh, but he really struggled with enthusiasm and getting voters to, uh, to seal the deal. He, his campaign had a hard time closing out that campaign. And you're seeing that with Hillary Clinton, too. People felt like they owed it to Bob Dole to vote to Bob, for Bob Dole and that he'd put in his time, much like Hillary. But they were casting about for a more exciting alternative. Ultimately, back then, the establishment of the Republican Party prevailed because it was a loyalist party. That may or may not be true in the 21st century. Why is, uh, for an international audience, why is Wisconsin important tonight? Wisconsin is important because uh, it is a potential hinge point. It looks as though tonight is Challenger's Night in Wisconsin. And I would just make two basic points. The first is, on the Democratic side, it shows that the Sanders argument, uh, the Sanders econ argument, economic argument still has traction. Uh, and foreign viewers, especially in Europe, might see in Sanders something that looks like sort of old labor in the UK. And so they might be more familiar with that ideological mix. Uh, the Republic hasn't had much of that type of politics. Um, and so it's very interesting, it exposes a number of interesting fissures uh, on the Democratic side, and Hillary's had to run left uh, to counter that. On the Republican side, um, it opens up questions about the long-term ability of the Republican Party to survive and function as an actual national party. Um, this is a, in some ways, almost the last gasp attempt of the Republican establishment to stop uh, Donald Trump. And it looks like it will have been successful, we think, based on the exits, based on the data. But, um, you know, we go into the convention, he needs 1,237 
a lot of those delegates are the establishment, and after they've made that first vote, all bets are off. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting, and we'll definitely have you back to talk more about it because it's not going away. Thank you so much, Robert. Appreciate Thank it. you.